The state of our world gives cause for concern. Population increase, climate change, conflicts, the ever-widening gap between rich and poor, the burden on the ecological systems, the inequality between the health systems worldwide. Yet health is of supreme importance for individuals and all societies. Health is a fundamental basic and a human right. The second World Health Summit 2010 in Berlin. Rudolf Virchow had already made clear early on here at the Charité that medicine is a social science and politics is nothing other than medicine on a large scale. In line with this tradition, the WHS 2010 also made this topic the focus of the political agenda. It's, uh, for the future to come, progress is enormously fast in research and uh, we have a responsibility to translate that into uh, application, transfer our knowledge to the population. And uh, I think these structures need to be at least helped. I mean, we can do ourselves quite a bit and we do, but politics have to help. 1,200 high-ranking and well-known representatives from science, politics, civil society and business met up under the motto Translation, Transition, Transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants attending the opening ceremony of this World Health Summit. For the focus is increasingly on global medical problems. Chronic illnesses such as cancer, cardiac diseases and diabetes have long ceased to be the preserve of wealthy nations. 80% of these non-communicable diseases now occur in newly industrialized and developing countries. Causes include increased consumption of tobacco and alcohol, a lack of exercise, unhealthy diet. We were also discussing not only the enormous uh, impact on health development, but we also discussed the uh, uh, considerable impact on socio-economic development because these uh, chronic conditions are now um, imposing a, a heavy burden on sustainable development and they are impeding efforts to reduce poverty. Medical challenges and medical care are subject to rapid changes worldwide. Climate change will have drastic consequences for human health. The consequences are not yet foreseeable. Climate change will have massive and very complex impacts on public health, on global health. And many of the aspects have not been deeply researched so far. It will be a major agenda setting challenge to do that. Global warming so far has been mainly caused by population civilizations living in colder climates, actually for burning coal, for example, to heat their homes, things like that. So, but the impacts will be heavily felt, in particular in the developing world. Still a challenge, reducing the inequality between the healthcare services of industrial countries and countries such as South Africa and Rwanda. For without external help, these countries will be unable to overcome the challenges in the health sector. At the moment, uh the role that is being played by Global Health is to help us with strategies, but also with funding partnerships. Uh, because we do need these funding partnerships uh, in order to, to survive this onslaught by diseases. Each of these challenges uh, needs a global uh, network of decision makers, of funders, and partnerships. We need uh, partnerships between the public and private sector. We need partnerships between the developed world and the developing world. We need partnerships between the governments and academia and faith-based organizations to tackle these uh, challenges and especially to raise the funding required to, to address these challenges. All over the world, health systems are coming under pressure. In the future, it will be increasingly difficult to be able to finance first-class medicine, even in developed countries. The pharmaceutical manufacturers are also seeing themselves confronted by a new situation. I think the modern healthcare company needs to be involved in new technologies to really focus on prevention and better management of chronic diseases to get better outcomes and better management of cost. Health needs to be reconsidered and reappraised. The health system must be optimized so that despite limited financial and personal resources, the highest standard of health is achieved. Tuberculosis is a global problem and therefore requires 
global leadership, this is applicable to all the pandemics, to all the major problems that we have in public health. On the other hand, the World Health Policy must be modified in such a way that prevention is given priority, so that avoidable illnesses cannot develop in the first place. We all know that uh, we cannot afford anymore the type of high-tech medicine we are, which we are practicing in some parts of the world. We are treating about uh, 300 million Europeans, 300 million North Americans, 100 million Japanese, and another 500 million perhaps people around the world, privileged people around the world, by the standards of modern medicine. But that means that uh, about 1.5 billion people are treated the way they can be treated, and about 5 billion people are not treated the way science could, has taught us to, to, to treat people. And we cannot afford to introduce our medicine around the world to these 5 billion people, and thereby we have to think medicine anew, and the way to do medicine in the future is by prevention, by preventing from people getting sick. The first World Health Summit got matters off to a successful start in 2009. In 2010, the summit generated tremendously positive feedback. In order to continue this exceptional and internationally recognized meeting, high-ranking representatives from science, politics, civil society and business will be meeting up again in 2011 from October 23 to 26 in order to tackle the global challenges of the world's health and to search for multilateral solutions.